What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Yesterday I put together a video critiquing is probably the best word Andrew Tate's instructional on defense where he basically bashes the Dutch guard of stacking your hands up and holding them tight to your head to defend yourself. And because I was critiquing him so heavily, I didn't really get around to instructional where I show you what I think you should be doing for defense. So today that's what we're going to focus on, how to go about forming the best defensive skills so you take all aspects of defense and put it into play so you don't get hit when you spar or when you fight. Now, first of all, it should be said that Andrew Tate and his take on defense is somewhat appropriate. Like, to say that Dutch stacking guard does not work, that's just ridiculous. It absolutely does work, and there are many fighters who have basically made a whole career out of that Dutch style guard. But he's correct in saying that, you know, head movement is good too. In fact, probably better. But to tell somebody not to stack their hands and only utilize head movement or footwork, it's not a good way to teach somebody. It's an absolute. And there should not be absolutes. There should be bits and pieces of different styles to form the ultimate defensive style. But that's still not enough. So we're going to go through three things you have to understand about defense. And then at the end, we're going to get to part number four, which is essential to wrap everything up and actually make yourself a good defensive fighter. Without stage number four, the first three stages will not work. So let's start off and let's first talk about Andrew Tate's issue with defense and stacking the guard in that Dutch style. This will be our point number one. And this, in my opinion, is something you absolutely have to be good at. Does it need to be your go-to style of defense? Absolutely not. But being able to protect yourself in this spot here when number one, you're injured, or number two, you're tired, is very important. Or number three, you're somebody like me and you just like being in here, you feel safe. This absolutely works. I've gone up against guys who are 170, 180, 190 pounds in sparring sessions who are trying to rip my head off for some reason and hiding behind that Dutch guard works very well. Now, if you don't understand how to do this, and you're going, well, every time I fall to the Dutch guard, I feel like I'm getting dummied. Well, that's very simply, you're not utilizing the muscles of your body correctly. So if my neck is loose and I have my hands plastered against my head, I'm still gonna get my head dummied around. I have to tighten my neck. But if I tighten my neck and my arms are loose, when the guy hits me, my hands are gonna get knocked off and then I'm gonna get punched in the head. That does not work either. There's this combo of neck tightening with chin getting tucked hands really high, a little bit of stiffness through the shoulders and arms when the impact comes so that I can absorb the shots and not get knocked around. In addition to that, the core needs to be a little bit tight. The legs need to be a little bit tight, but only in those quick instances where impact is coming and then I need to go back to being relaxed. If I can put all that into play, then absolutely having this is very important. As we said, number one, for when you're tired and you can't utilize the other tactics, or number two, when you get hurt and you're not thinking correctly. But stage number two, as Andrew Tate pointed out, is utilizing the head movement. Head movement is going to be ideal. 100% ideal. Somebody throws instead of stacking up and trying to block and take impact, if I can move my head, that's preferable. The issue that I have with only doing this, I actually put a video together the other day about Dominic Cruz and how he got knocked out over the weekend and how if you slip everything, eventually you're gonna run into a technique. You're gonna slip the wrong way in the wrong moment and you're gonna take twice as much impact, maybe not twice as much, but more impact because you're moving into the kick or the punch. So relying strictly on head movement is not wise. You want to be able to go from here to here, move around, go, uh oh, I'm not gonna be able to slip this next shot and block it. When you can do that, you're becoming a more comprehensive defensive fighter. To get better at head movement, very simply just have somebody either with pool noodles or hands throw at your head, you practice moving, but you keep them here. Kind of like Mike Tyson did with his peekaboo style. If your hands are down here and you go the wrong way, there's no correction. 
you're gonna take a shot. But if your hands are here and you go, uh oh, I'm slipping, but there's a technique coming, then I can get my hand up at least and protect myself. So sort of putting that lower Dutch style guard down a little bit, Mike Tyson peekaboo style with some slipping, that is extra great and you're gonna be that much safer. Now stage number three of the defense is utilizing footwork because number one, we block here. This is great, but you don't wanna always be in that position with that Dutch guard. Number two, we slip our head. But if we can make somebody miss us by just stepping out of range every time they throw, that's even better because then I don't have to worry about, okay, slip one shot, slip two shots, uh oh, third shot, fourth shot, fifth shot, Maybe I slip one and then I move and then there's nothing they can do to follow up. But with all of these defensive techniques, you are still not going to be sound at your defense if you do not incorporate number four. Point number four is so important and it is breaking off their attacks with counters because if I go, oh, I'm going to have the best footwork in the world and every time they come towards me, I'm going to move, I'm going to move, I'm going to move with my feet. The guy eventually is just going to go, well, he's not breaking off my attacks, so I'm just going to go kamikaze and just keep running towards him. And remember, the attacker can move faster forwards than you can backwards. If you decide you're only going to utilize head movement, like I said before, you slip one and two and three, four, five, six, eventually you're going to get tagged. You cannot slip shots indefinitely. And the Dutch guard is great until you start taking more than three or four. And then all of a sudden something's getting through. Dutch guard is good for one shot, two shots, maybe three. Anything to four, five, six, seven, you're starting to have issues. And on the scorecard, it looks terrible. The answer to all of these issues is countering. Block, 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 counter. Slip, slip, counter. Move my feet, counter. Once I can put all that together, the first three pieces, good Dutch guard making sure I move my head, utilizing footwork. Once I can do all that and all of them together, that's great. And then number four, placing in the counters. You will stop people in their tracks. And like I said, you don't want people feeling confident that they can chase you or throw punches unanswered. The best people in the world very rarely get caught with more than three punches in a row. You don't see the best people in the world get one, two, three, four, five, and not counter back or not break off that attack midway through. That is the difference between people who are kind of beginner intermediate and super high level guys. You're not getting five punches off on them without them slipping in their own counters and interrupting. So this is the true way I believe to teach defense and to show you guys how to get better. Now, of course, I could do a tutorial on defense. We could be talking about stacking, blocking shots, rolling, utilizing footwork, blocking with elbows, catching like this, catching like this. There's so much to go through. And that's not what this video is about. This video is about if you already know how to do that, how do you piece all that defense, that head work, the parrying, the stacking, the footwork, how do you piece it together to start feeling confident with your defense? Counters are the answer once you feel comfortable with the three points we talked about. This is a long winded video for me to basically follow up the one where I talked about Andrew Tate and him saying Dutch guard doesn't work. This is me saying, you know, you have to look at this in a more comprehensive manner if you guys want the full tutorial on all the blocks, how to block the kicks, how to block the knees, how to block the punches, all the different tactics, because even for a jab, there are so many ways to deal with it. And maybe the way your instructor is teaching you is not ideal. Let's do an example here. I throw a jab at you. Step back, number one. Parry, number two. Head work, number three. Catch maybe an elbow, number four. Pick off the middle with your hand, number five. You slip to the inside and counter with the corkscrew. There are so many things that you can do just off the jab. If you want a full 30, 40 minute defensive tutorial, let me know in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please give it a like. If you have not already, join the channel, get subscribed. As always guys, train hard, hone that defense, and I will see you back here soon 
for another video.